This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to look at counting problems. Specifically, we're going to address books on a shelf problems. Let's get started. Here's our first problem. So, let's say there are 20 different mathematics books, and we need to place them on a shelf. We want to figure out how many ways can we place these 20 textbooks on a shelf? Well, to figure out how to do this, one common practice in mathematics is to simplify the problem. So let's take an example if we only had four textbooks. So I'm going to change this problem just for a moment to look at four textbooks. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to imagine there's four textbooks laying on the ground. So if there are four textbooks, and they're laying on the ground, and we want to put them on a shelf, there's four positions that I could place those textbooks. Okay, so there's four places that I have. So what we're gonna, I'm going to have to do is, of course, grab a textbook. So I'm just going to grab one. It doesn't matter which one I grab first, so I put one there. Now, remember, there's four possible <clears throat> possibilities for a textbook to be placed in this first spot on the shelf. I got four different options there. Okay, once I make a choice and I put that book on the shelf, there's now three textbooks left on the ground. So if I grab one of those, I've got three options for a textbook there. Now with the two remaining, I got two options there. And then of course I only have one option there. And what I'm going to do is multiply them using the fundamental counting principle. So it's 12 times 2. There's 24 different ways. Now, of course, you may recognize the left-hand side here. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is really just 4 factorial. So in the future, when I do problems like this, I'm just going to multiply 4 factorial, use a calculator, and get that answer. Okay, so let's now go back to the original problem. So our original problem no longer has four textbooks, now there's 20 books. So again, you're gonna to have to place 20 textbooks on the shelf, so you gotta imagine 20 slots. So I'm not gonna draw 20 slots, instead I'm gonna use that nice little formula with factorials, and I'm gonna multiply this using a calculator. All right, so I took the liberty of light writing down that answer from my calculator, so this would be thousands millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, quintillions. So there's like two quintillion ways to arrange those textbooks on a shelf. Way more than you probably thought. All right, let's go on to our next problem. Here's our second problem. There are five identical math books, four identical science books, six identical history books, and they all need to be placed on a shelf. How many ways can this be done if we arrange them by subject. So what I want to do is simplify this problem once again and uh, just take a look at the case that I have five identical math books and I'm going to place them on a shelf. And I want to figure out how many ways there are to do that. Okay, so if there are five textbooks and we're going to be arranging them alone on a, on a shelf and they're all identical, it doesn't matter what order I place them in. Because if I switch the order, they're all going to look the same. So we're looking at the case of distinguishably different arrangements. So if I switch to identical textbooks, it's not going to look like I'm arranging them any differently. So I'm not going to count moving things that are the same, right? If I'm shuffling around books that are all identical, I'm not going to count that in my final total. All right, so let's get back to the case now that I have all these textbooks all lumped they're all, they're all lumped by subject. Okay, now, since it doesn't matter what order I scramble up the books within the subject, so if I scramble up all the English books, it doesn't matter. If I scramble up all the science books, it doesn't matter. The only thing that does matter is where I place the subjects. We can imagine putting the math textbooks first. In my library, I would do that. Uh, but then we could put the science books second, and we could put the history books third. Now this is one arrangement. We could put math, history, science in this order. Uh, okay, we could put 
maybe the history books first. And we could put science and math last. We could put history, math, science. Or we could even put the science textbooks first. And math and history second. Or switch around the order science, history, and math. All right, now you can see what I've done here is that I've listed six different possibilities, right? So if I were to separate them, and actually we could see this by separating them, I have six different possibilities on my shelf. Now an easier way to have done this problem, instead of taking all these cases and listing them out, there's only three things to consider. It's the order of the subjects. There's three subjects. So I'm going to take three subjects and I'm going to scramble them up with a factorial just like I was doing in the earlier problem, problem one. So this is three times two times one and that's six. And you can see I've got six different cases here. Okay, so I'm going to make use of this in the future anytime I'm asked to arrange by subject. Okay, let's uh, take a look at our third problem. All right, here's our third math problem on counting books on a shelf. So let's say there's six math books, three science books, five English books, and seven political science books that need to be placed on a shelf. Now, of course, here we're assuming that these math textbooks are different. Same thing with the science and the English. No one said they're identical, so let's assume they're all different. Uh, how many ways can we uh, arrange them if we put them, if we don't arrange them by subject? And then the second question, the second part is how many ways can this be done if we do arrange them by subject? Okay, so there's two different parts to this. So let's take the first part. If we do not arrange them by subject, Okay, so we figure out how many t uh, math textbooks are there. All right, so there's a total of, let's see, there's six math, there's three science, there's five English, and there's seven political science. So that makes a total of 12, 18, and 21. There's 21 textbooks. And since they're all different, we're going to figure out how many ways I could place 21 books and 20 different, 21 different slots on my bookshelf. So it's going to be 21 factorial, a huge, ridiculously large number that I'm not even going to bother printing. It's even bigger than our answer for problem one, which was in the quintillions. Okay, so this is going to be even larger than that. Uh, and it's just a horribly large number. And each book is looked at separately. We're not arranging them by subject, so that's why I lump them all together with one factorial. Okay, that's our first part. All right, let's take the second case now. Let's say we are going to arrange them by subject. Okay, now if we're going to arrange them by subject, let's figure out how many ways we could just scramble up the math books. Okay, well, there's six factorial ways of scrambling up the math books. Uh, how many ways are there to scramble up the science books? Well, there's three of them. There's three factorial ways. Okay, let's see, five English books, five factorial ways. And then there's seven political science books, seven factorial. Now, of course, the fundamental counting principle says that we would multiply these cases together, and this is the common wrong answer. Okay, the reason why this is not entirely correct is because, sure, I've scrambled up the math, the science, the English, and the uh, political science books, but I could also scramble, up, scramble them up by subject. So not only are there this many ways of scrambling them up individually by subject, but now we could scramble up the subjects. So now you'd say, how many subjects are there? Let's see, there's math, science, English, and political science. That's four. This goes back to our second problem. So we could scramble up the subjects, and there's four subjects, so we could scramble them up four factorial ways. So this, of course, I would plug into a calculator and again get a very large number. All right, and you can see there are, let's see, thousands, millions, billions, there's 62 billion, 705 million, 664 thousand ways of arranging these textbooks. There is also an extension problem here. Let's get rid of this work. Here's an extension problem. Let's say we imagine all of the math textbooks are identical. Science books are all identical. 
English books are identical. Seven political science books, they're all identical. And let's say we are going to arrange them by subject. And let's say we're going to not arrange them by subject. How many ways are there to do it? Well, to understand this extension problem, you're going to have to go back to our video called Counting Scrambled Letters Problems. But let's say we take a look at this. Well, really, we said that there's 21 different textbooks. So if there's 21 textbooks, there's 21 factorial ways of arranging them. But remember, if there's some identical books, if I switch the placement of two identical books, that really doesn't change the order, and I don't want to count those more than once. Okay, so so that we don't count duplicates, so that we have distinguishably different arrangements, what we would say is we put the repeats in the bottom. Again, you got to watch that other video to understand this, but you would have to put the six math books, you'd have to put three science books, because these are repeat five English books and seven political science books. You gotta put those factorials in the denominator and you have to plug this into a calculator. So you can see the answer is 19,554,575,040. Okay, hope you like that extension problem. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and text-based lessons. Take care.